our real world. Hello, YouTube. Hi, everybody. We're back. We're back. We've been recovering from England, getting back to life. Life. And thinking about what kind of content we want to keep doing on our real world. Because we do want to keep doing it. And to that end, we bought ourselves a brand new camera. Mm -hmm. We are now shooting on the G9X from Canon, and we think the quality is going to be a lot better. Um, so. And it will also uh, give us more reason to keep making awesome videos. Yeah. So, uh, we've got a bunch of stuff we want to talk about, but today, um, we're going to talk about how we made our non-accessible apartment accessible. Because we've had this question before from people and there's a lot of factors to consider. And even though we've been here for five years, yeah. it's not perfect. perfect. There's a lot of problems still. This unit was not designed for accessibility. Has a lot of advantages, but also a lot of drawbacks. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. MTB crib style. Yeah, we're going to show you our crib. Uh, our accessible crib. Our accessible crib. One of the first things we had to do in terms of choosing an apartment building, obviously was make sure that there was one where the front entrance didn't have a step. Now one of the not ideal parts of this building, even though the entrance is obviously accessible, is that to get to it, you have to go up this really, really steep driveway. There's alternative entrances to this building, but they're not accessible. So. Tim is in a power chair that he can go up and down that uh, driveway, but we have friends in manual chairs who really struggle. And in the winter when it's icy, it's pretty much a death trap. So that is one trade-off that we had to make. Now also, when we first moved into the building, they had this door button opener, because obviously Tim can't really open the door on his own. So this door was automatic, but oddly enough, let's see if it'll focus, the second door wasn't. Hold on. Uh, which would still mean that Tim couldn't get in. So we actually asked the building to install a door opener for this second door, and they did. Uh, legally, they sort of have to. They, they put up no argument against that. Another accessible thing we looked for was multiple elevators. Our building has three. Three seems to be the magic number. Uh, we've never had all three go down. We've had two go down, and that's frustrating, but at least we're not entirely stuck. So another thing that's not ideal about our apartment is that we live on the 18th floor. Uh, just kind of nice for the view, but ideally we would be on a ground floor so that if we had to evacuate or the elevators broke down, Tim could actually get out. Right. That's not something we were able to do when we were looking for apartments. It really limits your options. Um, so it's another part of an unideal situation, but one we've been fine with. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't, as Natalie said, it, it's tough when it comes to needing to evacuate, but touch wood, we haven't had to do that yet. So, another thing we had to think about was how Tim was going to be able to open our unit door. So, we have a solution, it doesn't always work. Let's see if it works this time. Yeah, checking, see. Oh, yeah. it worked. There we go. Automatically opens. So we can come inside. Here's our messy apartment, but that's okay. So obviously the door button opener was not here when we moved in. We installed something ourselves that was not very good. And eventually we lobbied our landlord again to say that they needed to install this automatic door opener because we claimed it was a rights issue. Which it was. And said that everyone else has the ability of access into their units and Tim doesn't. And it's a big company and you know what? They just did it. Tim has this button on his tray that he can press to open the door or, let's focus, or for anyone who's inside, they just have to push this 
and the door will open just like any door that you would find in public. Okay, so here we are in our dark bedroom because we wanted to show you a newer accessibility feature we've added. It's not crucial, but it's certainly nice. Tim can demonstrate. Alexa, bedroom on. Ta-da! We uh, got ourselves an Amazon Alexa. Um, an Amazon Echo. An Amazon Echo. And uh, we have added Philips Hue um, Wi-Fi controlled lights throughout the apartment. And that allows Tim to control all the lights, well allows anybody to control all the lights with just our voice, which is really nice. We can do the whole um, apartment on. You can say, Alexa, all lights on. and they will all come on like so. A way to control lights is really important. We've actually always had some type of way to control lights. We had a remote, we had iPhone controlled lights for a while, um, but would you say that the voice activated lights is the oh, best? Uh, absolutely, Alexa is a great new addition to our, our life. Uh, she can also tell jokes. And even little things like, for a long time, Tim can't really see, when he's lying in bed, he can't see a clock and he can't, pick up um, his iPhone to look like we might because it's on the bedside so table. I used to ask her. He used to wake me up to ask me what time it was to make sure that he wasn't late for work. But now... Alexa, what's the time? The time is 3.34 p.m. Thank you. So that's a nice little bonus as well. That is really helpful actually in the morning. So another uh, feature that we had to install in our apartment to make it accessible, you saw some of this in our um, uh, England videos, but this is a ceiling lift with a track. Um, ceiling lifts are not cheap and there's no funding for them. They're about $5,000. I used to work for the company, so we got a bit of a discount. Uh, the tracks themselves are relatively cheap, but you also have to pay for installation. When I say cheap, I mean like a couple hundred dollars, another couple hundred dollars to install them. Another thing to consider when looking at apartments is space to get in and out of doors. And to be honest, ours is a little bit tight. So um, Tim has a pretty good turning radius, but you can see it's not without some um, collateral damage. This might be um, a problem for some people. Tim has learned to live with it. It's not ideal, but um, it's definitely usable. Tim would have a bit of a harder time coming into this back bedroom here, but uh, he doesn't really use it, so it's not a huge concern. But having two bedrooms is another consideration we needed in finding an apartment. One, because if I go out of town, Tim needs to have someone stay over with him at night. So we need to have um, something, somewhere for somebody else to sleep. I suppose that could be a sofa bed, but I also needed an office space for myself. And I also like to have my own space in the apartment when Tim has attendance here and whatnot. Um, so again, maybe not crucial, but it felt pretty crucial for us to have a second bedroom as well. So one of the biggest factors we had to consider in moving into a non-accessible apartment was how Tim was gonna take a shower. And for anybody who knows us, they know of the good old tub buddy. It has seen better days, but we are still using it. Essentially, uh, we, need, we found this piece of equipment that we crowdsourced, actually back before crowdsourcing was even really a thing, because uh, it was about mm, $3,000 that we didn't have. So essentially what this does, I'm not going to show you Tim actually taking a shower, but in the bedroom, Tim goes from the bed, you can see my bear there, to this tub buddy system here. And then his attendant, let's see if I can do this where it makes any sense, is going to push him in this chair down the hallway. Our bathroom is extraordinarily small. And in fact, the door width was so small that we had to take the door off to give us enough inches for the tub buddy to fit in. So as you can see, we have no bathroom door. It's a bit of a bone of contention for me. And instead we've had this curtain for about five years. So his attendants will push him in this chair 
to right about here. You can see there's a piece that sits in the bathtub, which I also have to move around when I shower. And essentially, I'm not gonna do it all, but there's a bridge that connects these two pieces and Tim can then slide over into the shower to take a shower. Uh, Accessible bathrooms are one of the biggest concerns for a disabled person trying to fit into a non-accessible space. This is the solution we came up with. Unfortunately, the tub buddy is quite broken all these years later. There's no more breaks. A lot of the fittings of this piece don't work anymore. We're down to sort of one suction cup, so we hope it sticks. And the cost of a tub buddy has now gone up to about $6,000 that we don't have and we can't find any funding for. So I hope to make another video in the future talking about the problems with acquiring vital equipment, because I'd say that showering is pretty vital. But this is the situation we have. It does allow Tim to shower in this very non-accessible bathroom. And uh, it's what's working for us right now. So, we hope you liked our video about our accessible apartment. apartment. Um, there's probably some other things we might not even be thinking about, but I think we covered the majority of the things that make this accessible. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know. And, and thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Yeah. Uh, we've been getting new subscribers even though we haven't posted a video in a while. So that, that's really cool. Really cool and gives us a reason to keep going and keep making videos. So thank you to everyone. Uh, share this with your friends and get them to subscribe. And uh, we'd love to see you on our channel. Bye. Bye.